In this video, I will be discussing domain range. So let's look at a quick introduction. Let's start by identifying the definition for domain and range. So domain will represent your input. In other words, your X values. Since the domain represents your X values, you should think of the X axis, which is a runs in the horizontal direction. And whenever we find the domain range of a graph, we will look at the X values from left to right. Make sure you memorize that. Left to right is domain. The range, the range represents your output, which in return are your Y values. And when you think about y values, you should think of the y axis, which is a vertical line. And when we look for the range from a graph, we will look at it from bottom to top. So make sure you memorize that range is from bottom to top. On example one, we have a table or a relation. Uh, let's review real quick. Given this table, is it a function or not? The x values do not repeat, so yes, this is a function. So let's go back to the lesson. For this lesson, we are doing domain and range. So remember what I told you earlier. The domain represents the input, or in other words, the x values. So the x values here are the following, so let's list those out. So the domain is the set of numbers, which include the following elements negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. That is the domain, the range. The range represents output or y values. So here are our y values. So the set of numbers and the elements are 5, 7, 8, and 9. Example 2, we have a mapping, another relation. So quick review, is this a function or not? And it's not because this x value is paired with two different y values, so not a function. So let's go back to the lesson. Let's do domain and range. So the domain. The domain represents out inputs or x values. So let's list all of the x values in our problem. 5 and 6. For range, let's list the outputs or the y values. And those y values are 7 eight, and nine. Okay, now let's start with the graphs. So the domain, remember what I said, the domain, we will do that from left to right, looking at the x values. So let's do that. So if I start from the left side, the graph starts here at this point, and that point is at negative two. The graph starts at negative 2, and it goes all the way to the right, and it ends here at this point, which is at the following x value, which is positive 2. So the domain starts at negative 2, and it ends at 2. And since domain is x, you put the x in the middle, and then you put your inequalities. Now I'll show you how to read that in a minute, but first let's talk about if the endpoints are included or not. At x equals negative 2, you have a filled-in point, which means it's included. So negative 2 is included in your domain. So make sure you put equal to for negative 2. On the right side, at x equals 2, the point is not filled in. So that point, that x value of 2 is not included. So you do not include the 2 on the right side. So here's how you read it. The domain is x is greater than equal to negative 2 but less than 2. So you're telling me that the domain is everything between negative 2 which is here all the way here to 2. It includes every single x value between those numbers. Now let me erase this so we can do the range so you won't get confused. Okay the range. The range is from bottom to top, and we'll be looking at the y values. Okay, now let's look at the graph. The graph starts at this point, and the y value there is negative 2. So that's the lowest point on the graph. The highest point on the graph is this one here, 
and that point is at y equals 3. So the lowest y value is negative 2, highest y value is 3. y will go in the middle since we're doing range. These will always be the same when you have a beginning number, which is negative 2, and an ending value, which is 3. So let's see which one of these two is included. At negative 2, the point is not filled in, so not included. At x equals 3, the point is filled in, which means the 3 is included, so equal to. And here's how to read this. So the range is y is greater than negative 2, but less than equal to 3. So again, the range is every single y value between negative 2, not included, all the way to 3, included. Example 4. So the exact same thing, domain will be from left to right, looking at the x values. The graph starts here at this point, and that point starts at negative 3. Now let's go to the right, and the graph ends here at this point, which is at positive 4. So the domain spans from negative 3 to 4. Since we're doing domain, the x goes in the middle. These two will always be the same if you have a beginning point and an ending point. Now let's see which one to include. At negative 3, the point is not filled in, so do not include it. But at 4, the point is filled in, so you include the 4. So again, you read the domain like this. x is greater than negative 3, but less than or equal to 4. Let me erase this so we can do the range. The range is bottom to top, and we are looking at the y values. So the graph starts here at the lowest point, and that point is at negative 1. So that is our lowest y value. So start at the bottom. As you go up, the highest point on this graph is up here at positive 5. So our range spans from negative 1 all the way to 5. Since we are doing range, y goes in the middle. Since we have a beginning and an end, these will always be the same. Now let's see which one to include. At y equals negative 1, the point is not filled in, so not equal to. The highest point, which is at 5, is a solid point, which means that 5 is included. So the range is whenever y is greater than negative 1, but less than equal to 5. So every single y value between negative 1, not included, all the way to 5, included. Example 5. The domain is left to right, and we are looking at the x values. So as I look at the graph from the left, the starting point is this one, and it starts at negative 3. As I'm starting from the left, I'm going to the right. The graph ends here at x equals 2. So my domain spans from negative 3 to 2. Now let's see which point to include. At x equals negative 3, the point is not filled in, so no equal to. At x equals 2, the point is filled in, so equal to, you include that 2. Now the range. The range is from bottom to top, and we're looking at the y values. As I come up from the bottom, I'm going up. Notice that the whole graph, this whole line, is at this y value. And that y, y, y value there is positive 2. So again, the whole line is at 2. Therefore, our range is y equals 2. And here's the reason. There's no graph above it, no graph below it. The whole graph is right here at y equals 2. Another way of writing that is with a set of numbers. And that only element in our solution is 2. And again, because our whole graph is at y equals 2. Example 6. The domain is left to right, and we are looking at the x values. The graph starts here at this point, and that point starts at x equals negative 1. As you go to the right, the point ends here at positive 3. So the domain is from negative 1 to 3. Since you are doing domain, the x goes in the middle. These two will always be the same if you have a starting point and an ending point. Now, at negative 1, 
the point is not filled in, so not included. At x equals 3, the point is not filled in, so not included. So the domain for example 6 is the following. x is greater than negative 1, but less than 3. The range. The range is from bottom to top, and you are looking at the y values. The lowest y value, or the lowest point on the graph, is right here. And that happens to be at negative 2. So I'm starting from the bottom. I'm going up. The highest point or points to this graph is up here, and that y value there is 5. So my range is from negative 2 to 5. Now let's see which point to include. At x equals negative 2, you have a solid line, which means that point or that y value is included, so you include the negative 2. At 5, these points are not filled in, so not included. So that will be our range for example 6. Example 7, the domain is left to right, and we are looking at x values. So starting from the left, the graph starts here at this point, which is at x equals 0. As the graph moves to the right, it is approaching positive infinity. So in other words, our graph starts at 0, and it includes every single number to the right of it. So remember, as you go to the right on the x value, you're getting bigger. So that's why your domain is every single x value where x is greater than or equal to 0. And it's equal to because the point is filled in. The range. The range is bottom to top. You're looking at the y values. So starting at the bottom, go up. The first y value here at this point is 2. The graph starts at 2, then the graph keeps going up, approaching positive infinity. So in other words, everything above 2. Mathematically, you could tell me that by saying y is greater than or equal to 2. And again, I put the equal to, I included the 2 because the starting point is filled in, which means it's included. And again, the range started at positive 2, and the graph went up, approaching positive infinity on the y. So everything above 2. Example 8. Domain is from left to right, looking at the x values. The square starts here at this x value, which is at negative 3. And it ends right here, which is at positive 3. So the domain is everything between negative 3 to 3. And notice that at x equals negative 3, it's a solid line, which means that negative 3 is included. At 3, you also have a solid line, which means that 3 is included. The range. The range is bottom to top, looking at the y values. The lowest y value for this square is right here at y equals negative 3. The highest y value is up here at positive 3. Now, at negative 3, it's a solid line, so you include it. At the top, it's also a solid line, so you include it. So that was the domain and the range for example 8. Example 9. Domain is from left to right, looking at x values. As this graph goes to the left, it's approaching negative infinity on the x. As the graph goes to the right, it's approaching positive infinity. So that's what's called all real numbers. And the symbol for all real numbers is a R with a double back to it. That means all real numbers because the domain was from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range. The range is from bottom to top looking at the Y values. As the graph goes down, it's approaching negative infinity. As the graph goes up, it's approaching positive infinity. And again, so our range will be all real numbers. And instead of writing all real numbers, you can just simplify by doing the R with the double back to it, the subscript R. Example 10. The domain is from left to right, looking at the x values. 
So the first point on this graph is here. And by the way, notice that these points are not connected. This is what's called discrete data when you only have points. So the domain is from left to right. This point here has an X value of negative three. The second point has an X value of negative one. These three points on the Y axis all share that same X value, which is at zero. That point has an X value of one and the last point has an X value of two. So notice that the domain looks different on this one. And again, that's because this is discrete data. In other words, the points are not connected. So you should not have an interval or an inequality on this one since the points are not connected. Now the range. Range is from bottom to top looking at the Y value. So let's start at the lowest point. That's the lowest point. The Y value there is negative 2. Then it's these three points. The Y value there is 0 for all three of those. The next thing is these two points. They share the Y value at 1. And the final point is up here at Y equals 4. And again, you should not have an inequality for the range because the points are not connected. This graph represents discrete data, points that are not connected. So this is the end of the introduction for domain range. Make sure you like the video, comment down below, and comment what other topics you want me to discuss.